Hey guys, it's Mr. Bison here, and I'm continuing with every exam question that's ever been asked. And this time I am doing scatter diagrams. If you do want to use this document, it is linked in the description. So this is from a non-calculated paper. I don't think that's going to affect us too much. It says the scatter graph shows the maximum temperature and the number of hours of sunshine in 14 British towns on one day. That means there are 14 crosses here. One of the points is an outlier. Write down the coordinates of this point. It's clearly talking about this one. The x coordinate is 10 and the y coordinate is 19. So it is just going to be 10, 19. For all the other points, write down the type of correlation. So it is going upwards like this, which means that it is an example of positive correlation. We don't need to say if it's strong or weak, but it probably is what we would say is strong. On the same day in another British town, the maximum temperature was 16.4. Estimate the number of hours of sunshine in this town on this day. And notice how there are two marks. So you do have to draw the line of best fit for this one. So I'm going to draw a line of best fit that tries to go through like as many of these points as possible. I can move this a bit so it kind of behaves a bit more like my ruler would do. And we're going to estimate the number of hours of sunshine. So the maximum temperature was 16.4. I'm just going to zoom in for this to make it a little bit easier to see. This is 16, this is 17. So 16.4 would be two squares along like this. Let's make that become a straight line. And then I'm just gonna read down here as well and see what that pulls me to. And now we can see if this is a 12, I'd say that looks like it's about 12.8. So I'm gonna say that it's 12.8 hours for this. And then it says a weatherman says, temperatures are higher on days when there is more sunshine. Does the scatter graph support what the weatherman says? I mean, this weatherman's not particularly sophisticated, is he? Temperatures are higher on days where there is more sunshine. It's kind of obvious, right? But we can see it on the graph. So we're just going to say that, yes, there's positive correlation, but we're going to say when there is more sunshine, the temperatures are higher. Does the scatter graph support what the weatherman says? Yes, as there are points where there is a high number of hours and high temperature. In other words, there is positive correlation. I mean, they're trying to get us to explain what positive correlation is, but he's kind of already explained it himself. So don't really know what they were asking for that. I think it's a very odd question. Unsurprisingly, it's from like the first paper. And it's the first question of the first paper. I don't think they necessarily had the best idea of what they were wanting to ask with this one. So the coordinates of the point, we've got 10, 19, we've got positive, anything between 12 and 13, well, we got 12.8. And then here, yes, the majority of points for high temperature appear where there are more hours of sunshine, positive correlation. Okay, this time we've got a scatter diagram about 12 girls. It shows the age of each girl and the best time she takes to run 100 meters. And part A, which is down at the bottom, it says, what is the correlation? We don't need to say if it's positive or weak. We're just going to say, strong or weak. We're just going to say it's negative because it's coming downhill. Christina is 11 years old. Her best time to run is 12 seconds. The point representing this information would be an outlier on the scatter diagram. Explain why. So she's 11 and it would be down here. She's far away from the other points. So I'm just going to say that. I'm going to just say the point would be an outlier. Explain why. Because it would be far away from the other points. Because it would be far from the other points. I don't know, maybe she's like an athlete, maybe she goes to athletics club or something, but that's why she's an outlier. Debbie is 15 years old. Debbie says the scatter, scatter diagram shows I should take less than 12 seconds to run 100 meters. Comment on what Debbie says. Well, we don't have any information about 15 year olds. So we would say that this is extrapolation because it's not like this is gonna keep going. What does that mean that when you get to like 18, you start doing it in like 10 seconds and you keep getting older. We know that in reality, it's going to start to level off. So come on, on what Debbie says. Um, this is outside our range of data. Our range of data, so is unreliable. So is unreliable. Debbie may not be correct. And I'm going to say, as an extra thing, this is called extrapolation. They don't even mention this in the mark scheme, I don't think. But this is called extrapolation. Interpolation is when it's inside the range, anything between, I don't know, like 10 years old and 14 years old. So let's have a look at this. We've got negative. Um, it's far away from the other points. And the point would be outside the range of the scatter diagram, which is what we were talking about with extrapolation. 
You'll notice these are all really early on in the exam paper, like question one or question two as well. So they're considered quite easy ones. Sean has information about the height in centimetres and the weight in kilograms of each of 10 rugby players. He is asked to draw a scatter draft and a line of best fit for this information. Here is his answer. He has plotted the points accurately. Write down two things that are wrong with his answer. Well, if I drew the line of best fit, I would probably be doing a line of best fit that kind of looked like this. So I'm going to say, because it's an error one, I'm going to say that his line of best fit is not correctly drawn. And the fact I've actually drawn a correct one on the diagram shows the examiner I know exactly how to draw them. So that they might just be like, oh, that's not enough detail. Well, I've shown them what a correct one is on the diagram. Now, I always check with different things just to kind of look at the numbers and see if the numbers are all correct. So I'm going to try and find the second mistake. It's 85, 90, 95, 100, 105, fine. 140, 160, 170. Oh, wait, there's an issue here. Because it's going 160, these are going up in tens, and there isn't 150 on the diagram. So I'm just going to say that 150 is missing on the x-axis. And we'll have a look at these and see if there's any other ones that they've got that are wrong as well. So the line of best fit is incorrect. LOBF is line of best fit. The 150 is missing, or the height isn't linear. But they wouldn't accept. Uh, there's no title. They wouldn't accept anything. It does, uh, the graph does not start at zero, which is interesting. Interesting they wouldn't accept those. So again, question three, you can expect to see these quite early on in the paper. So we've got a scattered graph about the mark a group of students got in science in a, in, sorry, in a science test and a maths test. And um, we can see them all on here. Jamie got a mark of 34 in the science test. Use the scatter graph, find an estimate for Jamie's mark in the maths test. Now you do need to, for this, draw a line of best fit. So you kind of want it to go through like as many of the points as possible. Again, if you're using a ruler, it's a little bit easier than what I've got on my app here. So he got a 34 in the science test. Well, 34, if I'm just gonna draw up from 34 to the line, looks like it's here. And then if I draw a cross from the line over to here, it looks like his maths test mark is going to be about 39 or 40. So I'm going to say that his mark in the maths test is going to be 40. And the diagram's enough evidence for that. If you don't draw the line of best fit, you're only going to get one out of those two marks from uh, what, what that's what my understanding is. So we have got between 35 and 42. Great, we've got that. And you can see there's a method mark here for drawing a, uh, a line of best fit or for drawing a line from these bits. They won't just accept a guess. I think they really want to see you using the diagram for this. Again, it's a question one. So first thing you've come across in the paper, scatter graph shows information about the volume of traffic and the carbon monoxide level at a point on a road each day for 22 days. That means there's 22 dots here. One point is an outlier. Write down the coordinates of this. There's my outlier, my outlier, sorry. The X coordinate is 100 and the Y coordinate is 18. For another day, 370 cars pass the point on the road. Estimate the carbon monoxide level for this day. So this 370 is going to be here. So I'm going to try and draw a line of best fit through as many of these points as possible. Not easy to draw this one's line of best fit. In fact, I might draw it a bit more like this kind of thing. Hopefully that will be good enough. I'm going to draw up from 370 to the line around here. And then I'm going to draw across. So it looks like, I don't know, about 13.8, something like this. So I'm going to say about 13.8. And we've got one of the marks for doing a line of best fit here. Alfie says because there is an outlier, there is no correlation. Is Alfie correct? You must give a reason for your answer. Well, no, he's not correct because if you ignore it, there is correlation for these ones. So is he correct? And I'm going to say no. You should ignore the outlier. You should ignore the outlier. and the rest are correlated. Okay, let's double check and see if we've got these ones. So we're looking for 118 and 13.8. 118, yeah, 13.8's inside the region. In fact, it's bang in the middle, which is very good. And then we've got the decision and the statement. So no, you can ignore this point. It's absolutely fine. Lots of different things you could say here. So do have a look at them and see if you've got something that's similar. So that's everything that is on the scatter diagrams. I'm going to be doing histograms in my next video. If you do find this useful, it makes a big difference to me if you can just like the video, subscribe to the channel, share it with anyone else. And if you are going to be doing A-level maths next year, I have an A-level channel with tons and tons of stuff on it. Um, so do go and check that out if you're definitely doing A-level maths next year.